Hey, everybody, and welcome to Rat Salad Review. This week, I am very honored to have Jeremy Kling with us of Inhuman Condition, Venom Inc., Four, and about a thousand other bands and productions and sound engineering he does. He, I'm going to call him the Frank Zappa of death metal. Woo! Uh, my brother is going to be real happy with that one. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, that's that's kind of how I see it, and that's one of the reasons why I love In Human Condition so much, because there's so many bands out there now that do the old school style, but they kind of stick to that formula of, well, we want to sound exactly like leprosy or spiritual healing from death or obituary, whereas you and Taylor and Terry take that and from the past, and then add your own uh, abilities to it, and a different way of writing the songs that um, adds in. See, a lot of people say groove. To me, it's that swing, and I think that's what's missing in a lot of the more, my, of course, my fucking neighbor has the moment for ass, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm not good. I live in Florida. That's the lawnmower capital of the world, so it's all right, man. No worries. <laughs> but uh, and this new EP, Panic Prayer, really excites me, especially with uh, the Godzilla cover. Um, Blue Oyster Cult is probably my favorite band of all time, and I oh cool, love, I love what you guys did with it because you're not trying to be BOC. You're taking that 70s influence and making it your own. And if you didn't know it was a Blue Oyster Cult song, you would think it was an Inhuman Condition original. It's got a vibe, right? I mean, it's got like, so what had happened was I was at the uh, gym. My wife and I were there, uh, Deidre. She does all of our photography and such. And uh, a lot of you may or may not know of her work, but um, a lot of you do. Anyway, so uh, we were at the gym and uh, Blue Oyster Cult came on. I'm like, man, that song will be so sick in detuning. I'm like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, it can sound great. I was like, yeah. I was like, let's do it. And I came home and see, here's what happens with my brother and I, with Taylor and I is I'll be like, I'll have an idea, whatever it is, however harebrained it may or may not be. I might be like, let's do that. And he's like, green light, boom, let's go, you know, and vice versa. He'll be like, yeah, we should totally do with that. And I'm like, yep. There's no like, we don't often even so much as yellow light one another, <laughs> and we hardly ever red light, you know, because it's like, unless it's just like our backs are up against the wall and there's really no time, which we find ourselves with no time. But for the most part, we just green light it. And I was like, man, I think it would be killer. And he was like, yep, on it. And then literally, like the next day, he turns over that offering and it's like, yeah perfect you know it's and it was like so much more surprising to me as well it was like very surprising i was like because you never know how it's gonna go i mean sometimes you're like i have an idea you know i'm gonna make this for dinner and then you make dinner and you're like yeah it was kind of shit you know <laughs> it was like it was fine you know we had food it was okay but it's not like it wasn't like great but uh i think this blue oyster cult cover just came out fucking killer man it was like so much fun it was so much fun to do and uh you know, I don't know if anyone's ever screamed "Go Go Godzilla!" Yeah, before, but I have, and it was a good time. Like I found myself like smiling, like while I was tracking. I'm like, "Wow, this is a lot of fun." I'm like, "All right, cool." I was like, "I think we might have something," you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you can hear it come through in it too, and that that's what's so fun about it. It's so vibrant. You guys sound like you're having such a good time. Dude, it was a blast, man, for sure. Like, it was completely a blast, yeah. <laughs> now, um, on so the first two albums, Rat God and Fear Sick, I know it all kind of came together out of the ashes of that Massacre lineup. And yeah. while I actually, I hate reading the reviews online and seeing the Massacre 2.0 tags because, yes, okay, there, there's yeah. a lot of From Beyond in the first album, spiritually. But all three of you, I think, had your own ideas of what you wanted to do at first. 
but um, Panic Prayer, I sense a little bit of difference in the songwriting and what you guys were doing. And oh, yeah, a little bit of different influences is this. Well, uh, well it's an EP, like- so you're allowed to, like, you know, expand a bit. You know, you're allowed to do, you know, I mean, shit, Napalm Death put out some EPs where you're like, what the hell was that? You know, which I mean, maybe for the better, or maybe for the worse, you know, depending the artists are just being artists. So we just uh, we just, yeah, went into a slightly different direction. And actually, Panic Prayer wasn't even the song. Panic Prayer was not on the EP. It was not there. It did not exist. We had recorded everything. Uh, so we had recorded uh, Final Credits and Civilized Holocaust. And we had recorded the Blue Oyster Cult cover and we had the four live tracks already. So that was all already in the bucket. It was only ever going to be seven songs. Um, this will be a bit long winded. So you'll have to you have to forgive me. I'm, I'm going to go on a, a tangent here. Um, so all of that was done. Like I said, Terry was out on tour. Uh, rock and roll. Here we are. So uh, my. <sighs> Taylor is in a 70s jam band called Umbilicus. They had some shows set up. They were going to do uh, they were going to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They were going to do shows. No, oh, pardon me. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They, they were going to do shows. Um, and uh, cool. Monday morning, I get a phone call. My grandmother passed away in Michigan. It was like, ah, oh, shit. I was doing front of house for Umbilicus, so I needed to be back for that. So I flew up, I did a quick, I did the quick service for my grandmother and my grandmother was not religious at all. Not at all. There was no iconography around her house. There was never any talks about the afterlife. Like, I mean, Mike, she just, she wasn't that type of person at all. If she was religious, I had no idea. And more than, more than me, like more family members of mine had no idea. So it wasn't like, it wasn't something on front street, you know, um, Anyways, the preacher was like, I'm not going to get preachy because that's not what I do at these eulogies. And we all know that when someone says that about themselves, they're usually the opposite of whatever it is they're saying. They're probably just telling on themselves because he started the eulogy and he was uh, just like talking about my grandmother like she was this other person that none of us have ever met. She was like, she's walking with Jesus now and her faith during her life, she no longer has faith because she's crossed over and faith is redundant on that side. And I look at my wife and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> at that moment, I wrote the entire chorus for Panic Prayer in my head. I wrote all the lyrics. I started coming up with uh, copy paste pleasantries. I wrote, I started writing stuff in the verses. Uh, all of this stuff just came to me at 11 in the morning at my grandmother's uh, uh, service. And I'm like, I wrote the entire bridge. I wrote all the drums. So I sat there and I just wrote all the drums in my head. I wrote the entire song then right after that, just all the drums in my head. And I'm like, wow, I was so compelled and so pissed off because <laughs> I was like, what a fucking misrepresentation of this woman. Um, Definitely. So I flew home that night. And my drums were already kind of like unplugged from a recording. And I told Taylor, it was like, hey, uh, I started plugging him back in. I was like, uh, I got another song that's got to make the record. It, it has to. Um, I woke up the next morning. We, uh, we tracked the drums in about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes max. I played the whole song. I was like, here's the tempo. We tapped it out. I played. Done. We packed up. I went and did front of house for three different shows. It's like three nights in a row. It was like literally like back was against the wall. Harry was out on tour. So we had to have him track his bass out on the road when normally he tracks his bass with us. Um, He tracked his bass out. Yeah, he was he was on the road. He was gone. I'm telling you, it was like last minute. It was like last minute Jack right here. Like it was we were up against the wall, but I had to get this out. So Taylor ended up writing the guitars for everything. And it's like like it was fucking perfect man it was just perfect it was exactly what it needed to be and i was actually a little leery because the bridge for that song for panic prayer is really technical it's very technical and it's a it's a, a kind of a departure for i see which i'm like is this too much and he goes no it's an ep it's fine we can do whatever we want you know it's like creative license i'll take it and uh 
I recorded all the lyrics and all the vocals. Terry sent his bass over. I mixed it as if it was all together and then boom, right? So I didn't have like a full name for it, right? And we were um, like right around that time within that like week or so, we were watching uh, Escape from L.A. And a uh, great movie, by the way. Fantastic flick if you have not watched it. If you have, you already know. Uh, Snake Bliskin rules. Um, yes, and yeah. the president at the end of the movie like when uh, Cuba's invading and then the uh, the the guy uh, is threatening to nuke the whole country, he takes his Bible and he he's like, I have to go pray. And he runs, he like runs away to another room. And Taylor was like, wow, he just did a panic prayer. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, that is the name of that song. I was like, that might even be the name of the EP. I was like, I think that's it. I was like, I think that's it. You know, it's kind of like one of those aha moments. And that's what's cool about this band is there's no, while I'm not forcing anything, Taylor's not forcing anything, Taylor's not, uh, Terry's not forcing anything. It's just what it is. Like, like the idea for the cover, which we can really coolly see behind me. The idea for that was uh, I woke up in the morning and I just had in like a, had a, like a thought and I was like, I had flashes of like lightning striking outside of a house and the rat God dude was behind it, like lurking and lurking real hard. And I was like, everything's all black all the way around it. I was like, and that's just how I saw it. So I drew that like uh, crudely uh, pen and paper. I just drew it and I sent it over to Dan, our artist. And man, he just has always out of the parks it, man. Like, He's just so talented, that guy. We call him Babe Ruth for a reason because he really does just home run those fucking things. And this is this is my favorite thing he's actually done yet because I'm I'm like it represents so much more. And it's like it's less of a focus, but more of a focus on the creep, you know, and the exactly the, the guy. So uh yeah, anyway, so that's how that's how all of that even came to be. Like when he was drawing it, I didn't have a title for it. I was still like we didn't have that title until we watched Escape from L.A. And then it just kind of came and it was like, ah, there it is. It always illuminates itself. It it always does. It just takes as long as it takes. You know, sometimes we have to be like, come on, <laughs> show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing, though, man. It's a hell of a story. And, you know, mm. some of the best stuff I feel like comes together like lightning in a bottle like that, you mm. know. I, so. I think so too, and it, and that's my favorite part of this band is this band is just so honest. It's not uh, it's not trying to be anything. It just is what it is, and uh, the lyrics aren't trying to be anything. You know, they just are what they are. the The guitars aren't trying to be something. It just is. You know, then and I read a lot. The people are like, they say that like any band. Like I read lots of reviews, and they say that like. The new demo will come out and they're like, well, it's not original. It's like, okay. Uh, you read the new, you read the stuff from the new Venom Inc. And it's like, it's, well, it's not original, but it's, you know, it's not doing anything new. Okay. Uh, the new Overkill. It's not doing anything new. And it's like, okay. What, what, do, what do we expect in today's times? And we've had like 40 years of heavy metal pretty much everything's been done right i mean all there's 12 notes all the ground has been covered it's all been covered and covered very well by uh let's you know by everybody <laughs> shit black sure. sabbath did it all already you know uh so i don't know i mean if the move if the music moves you and makes you feel something then that's a success i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be new i guess but i don't know why there's like such a emphasis on that i don't know why there's well, they're not doing anything new, you know, that's for like most bands. And it's like, well, what do you expect them to do? I mean, Lorna Shore is not like a new style band. There's nothing new about them, no. but they're doing it well and people like it. So fucking cool. You know, Ghost is a new band. They're not really doing anything new. They're just borrowing from what, you know, we're all standing on the, my wife says this, we're all standing on the backs of our grandfathers. Okay. That's a really good description. Yeah. Yeah, it, and we're we're all standing there, and it's like, but does the music move you? That's something that Tony from Venom says all the time. He's like, thank you for supporting this band for 40 years, Venom, uh, in whatever incarnation and in whatever configuration, and if you close your eyes and it makes you feel something, then success. You're, we've done it. You're experiencing it. 
perfect. You know, that's what it's all about. If the music speaks to you, it speaks to you. If it doesn't, okay, just, uh, you know, move on, you know, or whatever. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Us as fans, we can hear when stuff's not uh, honest. You can hear when it's not honest. You can hear when it's disgenuine or disingenuine, sorry. Uh, you can you can hear that. I can pick up on it, you know. Uh, and that that's what's cool about this band is it just really fucking means it. Like Panic Prayer, like I fucking meant it. Like, ah, it's like ah, that's what's coming at you is like fuck. Because Definitely. man, I, because I feel that, I feel that in you know daily life, I feel that, like everybody else, you know. Oh yeah, I feel it too, and I mean it. It really speaks to me, and I love in human condition, but honestly, no bullshit. Panic Prayer is my favorite song yet. I, it oh, just, cool. Totally awesome. blew me away. Really awesome. Hell yeah, dude. It's uh I was like, this band needs a triplet vibe, I guess, you know, like a da, 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 which is like super Florida, you know. And then I'm like, here it is. Let's let's just explore that because why not? You know, that that was the thought is why not? Exactly. And then even on um final credits, I noticed it's got a lot of that uh that four feel to it, that uh old kind of hardcore like agnostic front type feel and i actually awesome. the four songs almost all of them are a little different in feel and i thought that was really cool because it's still 100 percent in human condition but you guys are uh well like you said you can do what you want with an ep and mm. they almost all have this different feel different attack to them that just speaks to me as a fan a lot cool Hell yeah. And then uh, like it really capping it all off with the uh, with the four live tracks, because not everybody's been able to see us. And if you haven't, this is what we sound like, because we are, in fact, a band and we do, in fact, play shows. So this is this is what it is, which I think that that's a special little thing. Uh, like I think Mono Lord just put out like a two song EP and I believe that they did it digitally. And it's just two songs, which is cool. Um, and I think that uh, Slipknot put out an EP. I'm not sure how many songs, but I thought it was just one with like some variants of it, which is cool. But some extra like live and, you know, creating like a full album's worth of music. I mean, Panic Prairie, you can like push play and then you can flip over to the other side and rock that. And those were some choice cuts from the, uh, from the last tour. So it kind of like has a little bit for everybody, which is awesome. And it takes up like a full, uh, you know, 35 minutes. I don't know how long it is. Taylor would kill me right now. Cause I'm, I know he knows it to a T he's like, Oh, well actually it's 32 minutes. <laughs> 32 minutes and 55 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. And here I am just like, the sort of like the town idiot a little bit, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. Cause you're passionate about it though. Dude. Time listings. Bah. But uh, yeah, no, uh, great pick for the show. I mean, uh, a lot of energy. That's uh, from the tour you guys did with Deicide, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, great. I don't know if it's the full show, but great selection on the uh, on the tracks. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Taylor kind of he sussed out like a, a bunch of different of our a uh, bunch of different live performances that we did. And he settled on those. And uh Kind of like between the two of us, we have like uh, jobs and we have like, uh, we'll, we'll delegate, like one of us will go and, and do something. And he, that was one of the things that he took up and I listened to him and was like, yeah, these are all like perfect. You know? And then we did our best to make them sound the best that they could. And, uh, you know, here we go. <laughs> here yeah. they are. We tried to make them, uh, you know, match them in with the mastering. So they kind of flowed well and it sounded like a record and, Everyone could uh, enjoy it. Like I said, I mean, some people can, they may never make it to a show. I mean, we may never play, uh, we may never make it to El Salvador. And people in El Salvador will be able to listen to it and hear what it sounds like live and, you know, have something that we have a stamp on rather than just like some YouTube video. It's like, you know, we're like, yeah, here you go. Here it is. Here is, you know, we we think this is a, a good representation of us. And I have to take a minute and say that, uh, because we have uh, guest drummers play with this because on the recordings, I obviously play the drums and I also sing and live. I just sing. So um, we had a killer uh, guest musician and his name is Simon 
and from he used to be in a band called the agonist they uh they just broke up and man he Simon is such a great drummer such a great drummer and did an amazing job and and was out there and had the spirit and the the vibe and it's really funny because his band like we told taylor and i were like listen you need to hit as hard as possible right as hard as possible and try and kill your snare drum right so his snare drum broke at a show and uh, <laughs> he, he he blew the head out and i don't know if that ever happened to him before or not but uh he blew the head out and taylor and i were so pumped we're like yes dude you did it right and he was like gobsmacked he was like I can't believe you guys were like happy that that happened. He broke his snare twice in that tour actually. And That's both awesome. times we were, yeah, it's totally awesome, man. We were like fucking pumped. It was like, yes, man. Yes. And he was like, just to totally, totally taken back because it was like, unlike any experience he'd had in his, you know, with his band, you know, they were like, well, you had to stop the show for whatever reason or whatever. And we were like, keep playing, fuck it. You know, <laughs> ah, <laughs> just having a blast. Cause that's, that's what this music is. This music is aggression. I wrote the drums. I was actually really bummed that I couldn't play the drums because I wrote all the drums to play live. So I intended it to be super hard hitting. And I had always intended on playing all of those drums live. Uh, and I just never was able to. So it was like, Ah, man, kind of a letdown, but I'd rather sing and I can be in people's faces and have a similar energy. I can have a different energy exchange that's also equally intense, but um, it's not the same as like, I mean, I love playing drums too. If anybody comes out to a Venom Inc. show, you can, you can tell that as well. Cause I mean, it's just like fucking gas on. I'm trying to break everything because fuck those drums. <laughs> oh yeah. I, uh... I saw you guys at, uh, cause I'm in Minneapolis here. I, I, I want to say, was okay. it the Liquor Lounge maybe? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right before the Misfits gig, I think it would have been then. Cause I think we, uh, we played Lee's and then the, the next day we did the uh, Allstate Arena in Chicago with the Misfits. That was, uh, that was wild. Yeah. But th that was an awesome show. I mean, I could feel that kick drum and that snare in my soul, man. So <laughs> awesome. Again, success, because, I mean, it's honest. It's happening. It's real. It's it's energy exchange. And again, like Tony, it was like he says, like, if you close your eyes and if the music moves you, then. Perfect. That's what we're doing here. And I, I, those aren't my words, but. I get behind them fully because that's it's very real and it's uh it's real it's good words I, I I always like them every time I like those words when he says them on on stage I'm like yeah you know that's it oh, yeah. you know if if you feel something then perfect oh definitely I exactly and um you know you were talking about heart uh in the music and honesty and just as an example even though I'm not the biggest Metallica fan overall um, 72 seasons that they just had come out, I think is one of the best things they've done in years. Cause they just kind of said, fuck it. We know what people want to hear. We already did it with hardwired to self-destruct. Let's um, let's get some of that NWO BHM feel back in. And Kirk was off the leash and okay. They might not have the ability to self edit as it were, but. I mean, it just sounds honest, and I, I think it's great. I think it's great, too, man. Uh, I think it's a really great album. I think that they're they're just playing. They're like, you can hear that it's, you know, four guys in a room playing, and that's awesome. And that's why I think everybody's going to like the new Deicide record. Um, I, I, like everybody else, have been, like, wanting to hear – I mean, I love Serpents of the Light. Um, I liked that after Once Upon the Cross, but I don't really want to hear, like – some more in that vein and wherever that band was at then they kind of like veered away from it for whatever reasons um mm -hmm. but man this new record that they've just that they've recorded that i've been privy enough to hear the entire thing from start to finish has so much honesty it has so much heart everyone cared everyone came in and fucking killed it in the studio uh steve murdered this album in eight hours he did the entire fucking album in eight hours which yeah. yes 
came in, murdered it. He was well rehearsed. He was on the game. Everyone was feeling it. Glenn's vocals are fucking hostile. They're just hostile. They're all the way aggressive. And you're like, if if for anything, I mean, like, I mean, he's one of the older, older guys in the game. Oh, definitely. Uh, unfortunately for, for him, I'm sure he'd probably fucking hate me <laughs> saying that. But I mean, but he is, but he, he's like setting the charge. Same thing with Steve. Like Steve's out there, like some of the shit that Steve played is like, my God. You know, and there are like it's not one hundred percent to the grid, and it's uh it's real. It's guys going in there and playing their instruments, and they're they're being honest. And you know, Glenn wrote some really killer lyrics, and you know, so did the other guys. They wrote some really killer lyrics. So it all comes through, and it all shines. And again, it's just you know, honest music. And I know that anybody who hears it. It's going to love it. And I think that so they have stuff that ranges their entire career that there's like nods and touches and things that are like uh, every single song to me has there's something in that's special about every single song. So it, there's something memorable. So I think that uh, everybody oh, would like that. And again, that word that we keep talking about is just honesty. It's it's there, which is cool. And I, but, I knew they were recording it. It's it's awesome. You got to hear it already. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. big and I can't wait to hear it. I, I love Taylor's guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. His his guitar playing is bad ass on this record. <laughs> it's awesome. bad ass, man. Yeah. There, there's some moments where you're like, holy fuck, that's so goddamn deicide. Awesome. And you're like, there it is. Yes. It's my dawn. <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Now, um, do you, you have anything coming up with uh, Venom Inc.? Because it's been a couple of years since the last album. Um, well, we do. Uh, we have. We've been doing shows. The um, the record came out last September, and then uh, we did um, a U.S. tour. We've done a shitload of festivals in Europe. Like we just did Hellfest, and um, we actually headlined the Temple stage, and then. Uh, to the u.s tour so in a week i have to fly to czech republic we're playing a fest there and then uh i leave the next actually later on after the show i head to the airport and i fly and i meet the dsi guys in norway so i have to fly from czech republic to bergen norway and we're playing a festival there and then we start a we start a european tour with dsi so i do their live sound i mix them live and um Oh, cool. That tour ends in Frankfurt, Germany, and I just stay there for a few days because I'm playing a festival with uh, Venom in Germany. So I do the fest, and then I actually fly to Crete, Greece, which is a beautiful island, and I'll spend five days there because then the guys, they'll go home. I'll just stay in Greece and wait for them to show back up because that next weekend we play a festival there in greece and then we fly to poland and do two shows and then i fly back home and i have two shows within human condition then i start a u.s tour in september with uh venom so that's the east coast run uh, oh wow yeah so the the next couple months are going to be pretty uh chaotic but you know it is what it is <laughs> i mean you you might have a lot of irons in the fire man but it, it's always quality and honest mm. i say it's a that's why i called you the frank zappa death metal it's so amazing the workload you take on and what you put out <laughs> hmm. uh you know I, I don't really to me I, people ask if it's like difficult they ask actually they ask my brother and i both this so they're like taylor jeremy uh how hard is this and we both are like it's not really hard it's not hard per se i mean you have to do the work you have to do it Mm -hmm. But it's not like hard. You just do it. You know, you just do it and it is what it is. And none of it, they say, if you love what you do, it's not work. Fair. I mean, I hate to sound like that. I hate to use that cliche, but it's really not hard at all. Actually, the creative part is really what's fun. And that's really, that's like kind of like a smaller <laughs> end of it. Because you have to do everything else. You know, you maybe have to wait in a plane for uh, 10 hours and land and wait there in Frankfurt for uh, three hours till your layover hits. And then you grab that and fly over for another three hours. 
and then land and then take a shuttle for an hour over to the uh, hotel. And, you know, maybe maybe it takes 27 hours from you to get from your house in Spring Hill all the way to Prats in Germany to play the festival. You know, maybe it takes that long and then you play the festival and then you maybe just get back and have to turn around and do the whole thing in opposite. You know, the the devil's in like the timing, you know, the devil's in that, you know, that's where it becomes like kind of difficult, and like a pain in the ass. But like the creative part is very easy. It's like, again, because it's honest. So I'm, I'm not sitting there trying to write like the, the next thriller. I'm not trying to write, uh, you know. A, a new uh, Depeche Mode album that's already been done and I'm trying to do my version of it. I'm just playing fucking music and I'm just like have an idea and then it just kind of flows and comes out. That's that's why it's like so easy to have all these different bands. I don't really have like, I don't only think it in like terms of like Florida death metal, you know, which is why <laughs> we have a punk band because I don't know, I like punk. You know, I, I like in particular, I like a lot of skate punk, you know, so I like that. And no bands are making that music. So. No, it's kind of like, that. no, uh, even the bands that were doing it, Bad Religion, Pennywise, Lagwagon, none of those guys new releases sound like how it used to, nor does it have to, because guess what? They're fucking good on it and they don't want to do that. So we just started a band. And it sounds like that. It's got that vibe, but it also has our stamp on it. And I, I'm not having to like think about how I really want it to sound or how I want it to come out. I'm just letting it, I'm allowing it to come out however it comes out. And then that's what it is. And then we have the punk band, you know? So because why not? Will we play a show? I would love to because man, that's a fun one. That's another fun one. I wrote all those drums to be able to play live and, you know. Yeah, I would love to see that live too, along with In Human Condition. Like I said, with the, the the punk, I've only gotten the opportunity to listen to a couple of songs, but it was great, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I love that band. And that singer for that band, Brian, is amazing. He's also the singer in Taylor's 70s rock band, Umbilicus, which if you haven't checked them out, check them out. It's really, really cool stuff. It's with Paul from Cannibal on drums. And uh, our buddy Vern on bass, he's done some he's done some stints with uh, Napalm Death uh, on bass. Uh, so check that out. It does not sound it's not death metal whatsoever. It is not. It is rock, and it has like some. It's got some '90s elements. It's got some '70s elements. It's pretty cool, man. Some like Scorpions, some, uh, some maybe some Blue Oyster Cult, you know. So yeah, Come give on. that a spin. Umbilicus. Uh, yeah, check check that band out. That's worth it. Anyways, that's the same singer as our punk band, Four. And uh, really? does a killer job. Yeah. That's awesome. I just wrote that down. I look forward to that, too. <laughs> Heck yeah. Now, um, so is Inhuman Condition going to be looking at touring coming up here? Uh, there was talks about doing something in November. We'll see if it pans out or not. Um, it's Scheduling is tough, and it's just tough. Scheduling is just tough. Okay. So, yeah. As you can imagine with uh, me with Venom, Taylor with Deicide, and Terry with Obituary, it's pretty tough. But uh, I think that it's good. we're going to try and hit it a little bit harder next year. But this year was kind of – that's why we did an EP because it was like, well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do anything. So let's just see where it goes. And then Taylor and I – started writing final credits and started writing civilized holocaust of course they didn't have any they didn't have those names but they later became that and uh our working titles were funny i can't remember those right now <laughs> i probably could ask taylor he's in the other room he's actually editing base right now for a client in our studio so uh we finished uh he did the brunt of all the shipping he does the brunt of the shipping here at hq so uh, he got everything out for this recording, and uh, he's now in our studio editing some bass for a client of ours. So he's he's in the other room over here, <laughs> keeping busy. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. We're, there's never a dull moment, man. Like yesterday morning, um, we got up in the morning and uh, went over. I have property. He also has some property too. I have five acres. He has about an acre and a half. And uh, we went to my property and installed barbed wire, me, uh, my son, and Taylor. 
spent about four hours and installed uh, a couple thousand feet of barbed wire. So, rock and wow. <laughs> Keep the critters out? Yeah, well, it's more to, because uh, to, it's like, it, it's essentially right now, it's just a blank piece of property. And we put a, um, we put a shed on there and to give it the illusion that someone is occupying the joint. We, uh, we did the whole front part uh, in barbed wire. So I need to do the side. I need to do one more side, but that's a 1300 feet one way. So, and we have to do that four times. So anyways, barbed wire shack sounds like another song. (laughs) Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know we've been bullshit most of the time, but you covered all my questions, man. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, you let me go. I'll talk a lot. I mean, that's that's a quality, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you, well, you know, that, that that's what I love about this is, is having a rapport and being able to talk to you different uh, musicians as, as friends, really. And I think that's important. And, you know, there isn't a, <clears throat> how do I put it? Some of them have a rock star trip, like a uh, certain gentleman uh, from another Florida death metal band who I respect, but I won't name mm. Yeah, you know, uh, some of that old guard uh, mentality is very interesting, and obviously we have to deal with it because we're like around and we see and we're privy to. But you know, I I don't get it, man. Uh, I don't I don't personally understand it because. Uh, I even see like the guys at the top of the heap, like guys where we'll all be like, wow, they're it. They have made it. And it's all still like modest living. I mean, we're not talking like uh, none of us motherfuckers have a jet. Nobody has a jet. Nobody. Oh, no. Nobody well, has a jet. Nobody has even has a helicopter, which I really want a helicopter, by the way. I, <laughs> I don't like my, it's like a running joke in my house. I'm like, yeah, I want a helicopter and a pad. And my wife's like, well, do you want to fly it? And I'm like, yeah, probably, but I mean, I don't necessarily have to fly it. I mean, <laughs> so it, it's like uh, she's like, "Well, we'll get you that helicopter, baby." I'm like, "Oh, you're such a good wife." I'm like, "Oh yeah,", yeah. but nobody has one. That's what I'm saying. Like, no one, no one's like David Bowie. You know, nobody's like. Uh, there's no, um, let's say, uh, there's no Steven Tyler's. You know, no one's. Oh no, but, but so it's I, a. It's so weird when that attitude and that mentality comes with it. It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, it, I don't it get is. It. And then what, what's always blown my mind about it, you know, just uh, perspective wise, because I had the opportunity to see Maiden at Hammerjacks in the 90s when nobody cared okay. about. It. And, you know, OK, I get it. You guys made it to a big label. You had music videos, whatever. But if Steve Harris can play a thousand seater club five feet away from the audience and then sit there and talk with us all and be very humble the whole time. There's no reason to be like that. And I think that none turned me off about that mentality is someone, you know, like Steve that had the success and all that and is still a perfectly cool guy. Yeah. I mean, there's, it, there's no excuse for it. I mean, those guys have a jet side note and they don't even, yeah. he doesn't even act like that. You know, he had, he lives, they literally have a jet and he doesn't act like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, that just comes down to the person, man. And like uh, needing credit where credit is due. And I don't know. I don't know. There, there's like a whole thing where like people are like need credit. It's like, yeah, yeah, you should. You should deserve credit. But what's the cost? Are you actually living an authentic life? Or then it's like, then then you're asking like existential questions. And it's like, ah, okay, well, then I find myself going, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'll just write songs about it and how you're eating yourself like civilized Holocaust and, or, you know, I'll write the lyrics, duck, dismiss, cover and hide. This is your decision. That's the lyrics because it is now repeat the circle. I mean, it's like, it's a fucking cycle. It's just a cycle. Uh, The final credits is uh, invite me, invite me to the end. I want to see front row seat. I want to see invite me to the end like to your fucking ending uh, uh invite me to your presence of your total death i couldn't get that out of my head i kept saying that over and over to myself i just kept saying that line over and over to myself and that was whenever we were starting writing this ep i didn't even know where it was going to go i just kept saying it i just kept saying it and saying it and i'm like okay i have to work that in i don't know why 
And that's because I struggle with people like that. I struggle with people with like massive egos where you're like, why do you even fucking have that? Like, like why? Like it's, even if it's like slightly justifiable, like why? Like what the fuck, man? You still have to go to Walmart and to everyone at Walmart, you're another shit heel with five bucks in your pocket. You know, exactly. you're, you're literally nobody else. No one gives a fuck what you what record you've put out at Walmart. The milk aisle, when it looks back at you, does not give a shit. It doesn't give a shit. <laughs> that might be the best description of that I've ever heard, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, lyrics for me is cathartic. I get to pen it out, and then later on, I get to fucking yell at people in their faces. So that's cool. You know, it's good. It's good for me mentally, and it's good for people to receive it mentally and interpret it however they interpret it. Uh, like, I had a fellow, I did an interview for this uh, this album cycle, and he asked me if Civilized Holocaust was about um, Ukrainian war. Uh, he's a European mm-hmm. fellow. And I said, no, but it's perfectly okay that it means that to you or you took it that way. Because, yeah, that, I mean, like, that's also loaded with uh, some shit, you know, <laughs> there's some oh, societal fine. problems, you know, there. So for me, it didn't mean that. But who am I to say that it doesn't mean that for you? Those lyrics can mean whatever the fuck you want. And then I actually pointed this out and he was blown away because I'm like, it doesn't matter what I say the lyrics are. Like, all you need to do is pair that with something else, and that means something else. Uh, so that Johnny Cash's song "Ring of Fire" they put in a fucking hemorrhoid commercial, and obviously Johnny Cash was not talking about ring sting. He was not talking about his hemorrhoids. Yet they put that song with a hemorrhoid commercial, and that dude he was blown away. He's like, "Oh my god, really?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're fucked up here in the states." You know, that's funny. It, there's there's an air of comedy there. Now, now that song to some people means him. <laughs> You're like, who authorized that? <laughs> exactly. And then one, one of the best examples there, uh, Springsteen's Born in the USA. You know, ever mm-hmm. since they, he's, it's an every patriotic thing ever. And it's about coming back from Nam being spit on and disillusioned with your country. But they use right. it to sell Fords. Yeah. <laughs> like a rock. Yeah, that's another one where it's you get, that, that song doesn't mean what it anyways, but it, it's yeah. it's it's whatever, it's whatever. And if it means that, then yeah. And if it makes you think of that, then yeah, then perfect. Who am I to say what it is? You know, I have my interpretation of it. And that's the I guess the beauty part of music is you can have your own interpretation. And it means whatever you want it to mean. And if uh I meant it in the sense of like people duck, dismiss, cover, and hide in particular because they they just do that. Folks do that. They they downplay. They get away from it. They they shy away from whatever it is that it, the light that's upon them. They may not like it. They you know I've had several exes. You've probably had several exes that are like that. So to crank that song loud and throw a middle finger up. And if you drink beer, have a beer. Uh, if you smoke then have a smoke and, you know, flick them off. <laughs> Cause that's what I'm doing. I'm flicking them off for all of us. Cause fuck them. Fuck those people. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. hundred percent, man. And, uh, they, they, that, that one I got, especially since I went through a recent breakup about a month ago. <laughs> that one. There you go. Fun. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, that, that that pretty much ties it up for me, Jeremy. If uh Okay. Stuff, uh Thanks for coming on, man. I greatly appreciate it. This was a great interview. Yeah, man. And- it was a good one. Thanks for uh thanks for hanging. Thanks for having me. And uh whoever is out there listening, thanks for listening and enjoy. Enjoy and rock and roll, man. Everyone get out there and buy Panic Prayer. You will like the CP. You will tell a friend. <laughs> yes, I like that. That's like threatening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or is cool. it a promise? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, have a good one.